All right, it's rainy, 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 rainy. Something I can't control, so bear with us. So we got a $2.99 brisket from Kroger. Last time we did a Kroger brisket, we we're extremely, how would you say, dissatisfied. So this is $2.99, so I'm on the warpath. I've been craving a fantastic brisket, and hopefully we can pull one off today. So this is a backup all the way from the Flat Top King when we did a brisket cheesesteak. I cooked a brisket on my Weber kettle, raved about it, and I didn't show that footage because I didn't feel like the viewers were interested. And then that's actually what spurred the idea of Peloton Pits, where there's so much interest in it. We're like, well, maybe people do want to see something different. So this is that. So I promised them a video on the Weber kettle of how I did the brisket that day. This is it. So there is a huge difference in my mind between a pellet smoker, a charcoal grill, and a wood. If I had to rate them, uh, depends on like how you're born, how you're raised, what you really like. A lot of people consider stick burners to be the number one, uh, charcoal grill number two, and pellet smoker number three in flavor. Since I was born on charcoal, I think it rivals a stick burner every single day. Wood is basically burnt, uh, I mean charcoal is basically burnt wood, right? Uh, it's just the airflow is a little bit different. Um, so to me, I'm a charcoal fan. I don't necessarily think it ranks or beats a stick burner, but you can create some damn good barbecue off, the char off, off a uh, charcoal kettle. So that's what we're doing today. Two things I noticed really quick is how the grains are running like this. So when we slice it, when we slice it like this, I know you guys want to slice it like this for the slices, but if you want the true against the grain, you need to cut it out on the bias. And the second thing I noticed right away is same thing as my other one. This might be the last one I ever buy from there. <laughs> it's just a lack of fat. I know you guys see the hard fat, but there is no marbling in this at all, which is why I think the first time I cooked one, it was so, so, so lean that I thought that I overcooked it, but maybe it's because of the amount of fat in there, but we're gonna get it trimmed up and see what it looks like. Now that you got all that trimmed off, you have tons of good stuff in here. Do not throw this away. This is perfect for burger grinds. You can chop it up. You can make fajita meat out of it. A lot of things you can do with it. Plus you got your hard fat you can render out for tallow and we'll be doing that. So just go to show the scrap pile right there. All right, brisket's trimmed to the best of my abilities. I've always admitted I'm not the world's greatest trimmer. It takes practice. One thing I do want to do, I can see it right now is kind of round it off. What is the purpose of rounding it off? I think it has a lot to do with airflow. Maybe on a kettle it doesn't matter as much, but also when you round it, like so when I was picking this brisket, my wife was arguing with me which one to buy and I kept telling her the ones that she wanted, the tips of them down here were too thin. So you'd end up cutting like way back here off and having all this waste. So I think like the guide is maybe like a thumb thick. So anytime your end is like a thumb thick, that gives you a nice even cooking area if it's too thin it's just going to dry out on you and you don't want to take all that effort to cook this for so long and then have crappy product i'd much rather go into a burger where you can recreate something great than to try to maximize your brisket and then have something bad we have our texas that that recipe's on uh pellets and pits there's no binder we just want to liberally season this up making sure to hit all sides I'm just gonna set on this uh, cooling rack right here. So that way when we're starting our charcoal grill, that moisture doesn't uh, ruin all the uh, seasonings underneath. And lastly, I got some coarse black pepper and I like to just top it off with a little bit more pepper than what that seasoning holds. We're kind of going neutral today, so that way we can use the leftovers on the Flat Top King as well. We'll probably do something on pellets and pits for leftover brisket ideas. The rain slowed down some just in time for me to show you what we've done. So the reason why we didn't talk, you wouldn't be able to hear me anyways, as loud as it was. So what I did was kind of like a modified um, snake method, which basically means I push all the coals to the side 
I don't count the coals. I don't think it's necessary. But what you see here is there's really no coals in the middle. So your charcoal is only, it can only eat a certain amount of fuel as it chases it. That's why it's called a snake. So I'm gonna dump it at the head. That's why there's less charcoal on this side. When you light your chimney or however you get your charcoal started, you do not want a lot of charcoal, okay? You only want just a little bit. Can you, why, why do you only want a little bit in your chimney? Well, if you start a full thing of chimney, then you're gonna have a full thing of fire. You know, if you're going low and slow, you need a little bit of fire. I've got some hickory twigs that I've just uh, hatcheted off, put those in there. Got my heat diffuser, just open one side of it. I put a drip pan down. Typically I don't add moisture. Um, this basically just catches all that fat from the brisket from dropping down. And last but not least, you're going to give it all oxygen until you hit about 50 degrees lower than your temp. So let's say I want to shoot 250. Uh, I'm going to hit it about 225 because that's going to give me 250 to 275. Then we'll start closing the vents, put the brisket on, and just watch it all day long. This is a personal preference, but this is my churning pile. I have rendered beef fat right here, or about to be rendered beef smoked tallow. This is all my burger trimmings, and this is just the scraps that I decided not to use. All right, we're close enough on our target temp. So what we're gonna start doing is backing off our vents. I've got marks set up here where I normally do this. Shoot about right there. Let me see your mark. Here. Just a Sharpie. About right there works for me. Got a cast iron skillet. We'll start rendering that uh, tallow. I've got one thermometer here that I just want to monitor the inside temps while I'm sleeping on the recliner. And there we go. We'll be able to move this thermometer from both sides if we need to. We can probe check it later. But other than that, the name of the game is temperature control. So if you need to add charcoal, you can. I don't think we should, or we should have to. Uh, and really just adjusting your vents, getting that dialed in. You can shoot up all the way to 300 if you need to, all the way down to 225. It's ebb and flow. Um, should be good. So maybe rocking about 8 to 10 hours, pull it, and uh, rest it. So Roughly two hours. Just going to show you really quick. Tallow smoking away, you can smell it. Starting to get a nice bark. Everything's drying out, looking good. We've steadily stayed roughly about 270 degrees to 265. We're gonna keep that temp rocking and hit you back in a few hours. Alrighty, our brisket's hovering around 175, somewhere through there. You can see all this tallow's rendered down. This is absolute money right here. I think this is a big key to making fantastic brisket. Do you have to do it? No, but I'm telling you it's worth it. So for the equal cooking and all that stuff, all I'm gonna do is take this, go that way with it. And then we'll let it go to about 180, 185, and then we'll uh, wrap it. Hoving around that five hour mark. If you zoom in close, you can see all that fat rendering out. See it bubbling up. That's awesome. Move the thermometer. I'm gonna keep the grill thermometer in there. And then inside you can see all those drippings and catchings. That's why I put that pan in there. Not necessarily for moisture, but more for just keeping all that stuff out of the grill. Nice color, nice bark, have a little moisture right there. Looking good. I like where we're at. So now we're just gonna foil boat it. Um, basically protect the tips. Turn up your aluminum foil. I like this. The more I do it, the more I like it. I can understand it because I like the bark. I think it preserves the bark versus just wrapping in peach paper or straight aluminum foil. One advantage of this is it will still allow that fat to render. Plus you get a little bit more color. And then take some of that smoked beef tallow. Just kind of pour a little bit on top. That's going to seep down the edges. 
then you're basically confeeding your brisket. So on the on the smoker it goes until we reach somewhere between 200 and 205. This really becomes down to, I think, personal preference. It comes to probe tenderness. Um, that's probably the biggest hurdle of people beginning to barbecue, especially brisket, to get fantastic brisket is knowing when to pull it. Even though it might say 202 or 205 or something like that, those degrees really matter. More importantly, it's the tenderness of the brisket that matters the most. Put that thermometer back in there. I'm kind of nearing the end of the process now, but I'm just taking those uh, little pieces of fat rendered out, straining all that stuff through a uh, coffee filter. You can use cheesecloth. Then we're just saving our tallow. So this is smoked beef tallow. This is what it looks like before it cools down. This is after it cools down. We use this on the griddle quite a bit. You can use this in tortillas for homemade uh, flour tortillas. You can use this for french fries. You can uh, fry french fries in it. Very versatile. You already bought it uh, for $2.99. You might as well use it because the fat is where the flavor is at. Ooh, alrighty, so roughly about eight hours. The reason why I pulled it a few degrees shorter than what I'd want, I'll show you really quick right here. Because honestly, it felt probe tender. And that's as much as barbecue as we try to teach is just because you have a number that's in your head that you should go to, you know, you should start probing it early. You never know. The last one I did from uh, Kroger's was extremely dry. So maybe just keeping it on there to 200, 205, aided in that dryness. Since it felt tender, I feel confident for doing it. We won't know until we try it, and that's what cooking's all about. I do want to show you what the uh, the grill looks like really quick, so let me get that set up, because I know that if you want to start uh, smoking on your um, your kettles, you want to see how much charcoal you use and all that stuff. So let me get that set up really quick. You can see there, so our snake started right there, and it wrapped all the way around, ate some of it up, and it's still working its way around. So what I do, give a couple of squishes, cleans the air vent, close it off completely. Do something like that. Then close my air vents. And then honestly, that charcoal will be saved the next time we start it up. You can bunch all that together, get all the ash out, and just reuse your charcoal you didn't um, use. So like I said, roughly, uh, what was the eight hour cook? Extremely fast for a brisket. Yep. Uh, but we did keep the temperature bumped up there. Uh, like I said, roughly about 275. It seemed like it just purred anywhere between 270 and 283, somewhere through there, and I was fine with it. Um, so now what we do. So now we're gonna let it rest. I'll keep my thermometer in there. I'm gonna bring it down to about 180 degrees after it comes down to 180 degrees outside. We will put it in our small toaster oven for a long rest, maybe about four hours. Um, I know some people don't have the option. We'll keep it in there for about 155 degrees. Uh, you can either do it overnight if you wanted to, but it's a little early during the day. Like I said, the brisket cooked a lot faster than expected. Some people towel it, put it in the cooler, let it cool down. Most importantly, you gotta let it cool regardless. So I keep my thermometer in there the whole time so you can watch it drop. Last thing you wanna do is cut this when it's piping hot and lose all the juices that you worked hard to, to keep, so. Can we talk about how amazing it smells though? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can see right here, the fat's rendered nicely. Got some beautiful crunchy bark. Um, extremely happy the way it came out. It's a little bit light in color for what I was expecting, but probably because if I had to guess, it just wasn't on the smoker long enough compared to, you know, maybe a 12, 14 hour cook, something like that. All righty, we let it cool down. I think they're cheering for your brisket. <laughs> <laughs> Neighbors are throwing a big old party. We started off with rain this morning, now we're finishing off with cheers. All right, there we go. Look at all that goodness right there. That tallow, that beef sauce, just everything combined. Mm. Mix a little bit of that up together, just pour that over top. Now remember, we need to cut it a little bit more out of the angle. So somewhere through there, uh, maybe down through there, but right there. It cut a lot easier. <laughs> yeah, that's so much juicier than the other one. Golly. Yeah, that's a good one. All right, so we'll cut like right here because the grains are running uh, 
this way. I don't know how they do it. I just know it pulls apart. Seems like this side's a little bit drier, but it's still moist. That's dang good. It is. I'm telling you, I think it comes down to quality of meat. Is it the best we've ever cooked? No, I don't think so. When in you the quality. Get, when you get prime brisket from Costco for three ninety nine dollars a pound, that's hard to beat. <laughs> There's a huge step up in flavor when you can find those prime briskets. Even the choice briskets for Costco, I think, are better than the, the Kroger briskets. Flavoring's on point. Mm. The bark's crispy. Mm. So now the question is, how do we prepare this on the griddle? What leftover ideas you guys have? We have a couple of mine. Love to get your thoughts. When we did this for the cheese steak, we took this, we chopped it up, added a little point, added a little bit of flat, and uh, chopped it all up and made that brisket cheese steak. So I'm pretty interested to see what we can come up with. I'm thinking of a taco line. My wife says something else, so we'll see what happens. All right, guys, there you go. There is a brisket on the Weber kettle. We used a Summit Charcoal Grill Center today. That's the one that we have. All the information that we gave you can be translated to a standard wherever kettle. You guys can play around with it, but that's really how you do it. That two zone system, getting that fire separated from the uh, from the brisket, rotating your brisket so it cooks evenly, and just hitting your target temp. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, share it with your friends. Peace. Mm. Golly. Yeah.